There's a house party. Oh, how luxurious. You're gonna go to a party, you're gonna be really hard. What turns out to be a bullshit excuse, but that's not important at the moment. He offers me a job. Fucking pleb of a coach. All right, morning. Thought I'd share a canon event story today. My canon event story. Uh, question I have though, before I can even get into that is, who wins a 100 meter foot race between a two year old and 10 96 year olds? My money initially was going to be on the two-year-old. Right? He's, just, he's going to make it. The other guys, the other 96-year-olds with the Zimmer frames, they're just going to fall over. But you think about using the Zimmer frame to attack the two-year-old, two-year-olds out of action, 96-year-olds can make their way. All right, so 18-year-old Oliver, he's, he's kind of not really sure what he's doing in life. Anyway, he finds his way into a scholarship to go over to, a soccer scholarship to go over to the States to play soccer. And you may have heard me talk about playing soccer in the States as this kind of like, well, I did, but I also didn't. So here's the story behind that. One of my friends that I went to school with back in England, he got a scholarship to play over in the States. And like, I've played with him growing up and I knew that I was at least as good as him. All right, let's try this. And I'm in the French Alps working a job out there. Oh, how luxurious. No, I was literally sleeping on floors. So not luxurious. So I apply, do the trials, get everything, get over to the States. There's a story of how I picked this college, but that's not important at the moment. And I'm training super hard over the summer to try and get ready to play soccer full-time I guess at college training really hard I get to the States and the weather the summers out here just unbelievable I felt like I was drinking as I was walking around outside you know I pay place pretty well but just severely acclimatized, non-acclimatized. I just wasn't acclimatized, right? Anyway, the first team go off to Salt Lake City. They play in a tournament and I'm left there with a few of the other guys that are injured and some other freshmen, all the freshmen. Are you going to use my lane as well, are you? Okay, cool. <laughs> and there's a house party. So we go to this house party Everyone's drinking, but the coach has told us no drinking. So I'm like, all right, okay. Well, that's a bit annoying because I'm 18. I'm coming from a culture where if you're going to go to a party, you're going to be drinking. Seems, seems pretty normal. So everyone's got these red solo cups. And so I grab one and I pour Sunny D into it. Of all drinks, I pour Sunny D into it. I'm just kind of like plodding around this party, doing my thing. And we decided to go from this house party over to a frat house, to a fraternity. So I'm carrying my red solo cup, which to me, from all American movies, a red solo cup means you're drinking alcohol. Right, so that, that's what it means to me. So we're walking along the street and a cop pulls up behind us. And I've seen from all these American movies, you can't have open containers in the street. And I'm thinking, oh gosh, what am I doing here? And I panic, I drop the cup. So I'm like, he's gonna see it's a red cup. He's gonna know it's alcohol. And then we're in a problem. So I drop the cup. Anyway, nothing really comes of it. He tells me just to go back and pick up my litter, which very much appreciated. A week or so later, I don't know how this happened, coach pulls me into the office and this is where it starts to go downhill. He says, I heard you were drinking the other night. I said, no, I wasn't. I was drinking Sunny D. He goes, no, that's not true. Cops pulled you over and you dropped your cup because I had alcohol in it. You must have been drinking. I said, no, I, like, I wasn't drinking. It was just Sunny D. And I explained everything I've just explained to you. He wasn't having any of it. He didn't like that one bit. So for the next two years, two and a half years, I'm working my ass off every day. And bear in mind, a college 
sports player, soccer player, whatever, you're training two hours a day with a game or two a week and maybe one day off a week. So it's a lot of bloody work. There's a lot of work that goes into it. And coming from England where I would train, we would train twice a week and then play a game once a week, just wasn't that serious. So end of my first year, we're coming into the second year, maybe coming into the third year. And I've decided that, all right, screw it. I'm gonna do everything I can because he's given me this, what turns out to be a bullshit excuse. He's given me an excuse of, you just need to get fitter. Bear in mind, I'm already like top five in the fitness coming in each time, each year and throughout the season. So I'm like, all right, screw it, okay. So I come in that year, second, I think it was third year, just unbelievably fit, just for me, unbelievably fit. And I get beaten out in one race by a kid who eventually goes pro. So super athletic guy. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. Have a conversation and it's pretty clear that I've got no chance of playing. Like it's not explicitly said, but this, this coach is still hates me so much, still thinks that I've lied to him, that he's willing to make my life a misery and keep lying to me about soccer just so that he can feel like he's winning. So I'm doing a software engineering degree at the time and a year or two before that I met this guy who set up a company in town uh, doing, uh, cl providing cloud services. So him and I have stayed in contact and eventually we get to a point of he offers me a job to do while I'm in college. Now I've already got a job at the college doing one thing to try and earn a bit of money and he gives me this offer and I'm, I'm trying to weigh up. I've got this soccer thing. They're paying a scholarship and, but it's, but it's sapping all this time and I'm not enjoying it and I'm dealing with this fucking pleb of a coach. Just like so mentally immature. Mate, are, you, are these people stupid? Absolutely stupid. So I'm now trying to work out. What do I do? Do I keep trying to play soccer? Because I feel like if I, if I stop, then I'm just giving up. I'm never making it. I'm never getting to my goal and this guy wins and it sucks. But I can't do this job, this new software engineering job, which would turn out to be my career as well as soccer. And I'm trying to work out in my head, do I... I'm trying to get through the fact that I have to give up on something, give up on this goal and not make it. I don't know what to do. And I don't know how I came to this realization, but something hit me that was there is a difference between giving up and moving on. Giving up is this, I can't be bothered, it's not working, I don't know what I'm gonna do next. But moving on is this belief that you have something better, you know that the thing you're doing isn't working out no matter what you try to do, but there is something better you can do. So in this case for me, playing soccer, I wasn't enjoying it, it was a waste of time, I wasn't going anywhere with it, I never intended to go pro, I never was good enough to go pro, but I did have this job offer that would help me in my career of where I thought I would go, because at this point, the idea of content creation wasn't a thing for me. So I gave up soccer. I moved on from soccer and started working. Best decision best lesson that I could have had in my life was to learn the difference between giving up and moving on. And now I can look at every situation and figure out why am I doing this? Am I doing it because I really want to do it or because it may look like I'm giving up to other people? 
And once I can get myself into this mindset that actually it's not that I'm giving up, it's that I'm moving on, or if I can look at it that way, then I feel far better about it. All right. You end up, yeah, you end up with this person with a weakness of being led by someone else, like not sure what moves to make, trying all these different things and believing that stopping something is giving up and that's a bad thing, to coming out the other end with a whole new strength and perspective at looking at things, that there's no point wasting your time digging into something that isn't going to come through, especially if there's a better option on the table somewhere. That's my first time really telling a story, like a longer story, in somewhat of a real story format, that I, the format that I use for my TikToks. Like you have this set up once, which is to play college in America. The point of no return is you get to America, but the catch is that it's so bloody hot and you end up having an issue with the coach. Testing the floor of someone who's being led by other people. And then you have all the different things that you try, like getting fit, just trying to get through it, until eventually you hit this crisis point of, you have this job offer, but you can't do this job because you have this soccer still, and like the climactic choice of, do I just keep going with soccer and plugging away and trying to figure it out, even though it may not figure itself out? Or do you decide to quit that job, quit that, soccer and, and learn that life isn't about pursuing something that isn't meant to be for you. And learning that maybe moving on from it is the better thing to do. I hope you like that. I don't know if I have too much to blabber on about outside of that, so. Good morning. Merry Christmas. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs> you know what? Oh gosh, let me turn this back on. I had a thought. The new clips that are putting on social media, the funny clips that we've done, funny. I've been doing a lot better. Like none of them have really broken through, but we're talking like 500 to 1,000 views on most of the videos now. So I'm really pleased with how that's looking. I think that's the move, I'm enjoying it more. And the if we look at it from a higher level, I'm talking about the socials automation clips that I take out, edit into something funny or stupid and then post. Uh, yeah, they're doing quite well. And I found that, or I'm thinking that the general idea behind these clips is to do something that's stupid or funny or like to self deprecate, to make me look silly or stupid. And I'm fully okay with that. I think that's funny. And uh, hopefully that becomes the like persona that people see is a guy who doesn't take himself too seriously, uh, creative, and likes to spout out rubbish. Yeah, yeah. All right, what it, it is the 22nd today. So four, four more days until we get back to the normal vlogs, pod vlogs. Get my parents out, get them out of the house. God. All right, cool, see you tomorrow.